Hey everybody, it's Dr. Jeff, and I am coming to you today to discuss one of the questions that has been popping up over the weekend uh, on the Facebook group. And that is regarding loss of muscle mass uh, during weight loss on the GLP-1 drugs. And we do see that a lot, and we see it a lot in my practice, I see it a lot in the practices that I consult with. Um, and it's not really an issue of the GLP-1 drugs, it's more of an issue on the degree of weight loss. If you lose weight loss very rapidly from any method, whether it be from diet, whether it be from starvation, whether it be from the GLP-1 medications, if you lose weight rapidly, you're going to lose fat mass as well as uh, muscle mass. And so we like to keep our weight loss um, in our practice down to two or three pounds per week, which means you're losing about 10 to 12 pounds um, a month. And that is a sensible weight loss. Um, it's a sensible weight loss because you should not lose muscle mass and you should not have much of a rebound uh, once you go off the medication, um, which is also somewhat of an issue. Uh, we do see people that come in that have had rapid weight loss uh, with our with our treatment or they've been to another practice where they were on a higher dose and they were losing a lot of weight we jokingly call it ozempic butt uh, where they come in with a uh, sagging backside uh, but there are ways to avoid it and there's a couple things i want to make sure that we go over first of all if you look um, on the back of the screen you can see that um, i do have an article up i always like to um, have the articles present um, this article was one that came out um, in um, the Journal of Endocrine Met Met uh, Metabolism. It was published in September of 2019, and it talks about um, lean body mass uh, on the GLP-1 uh, agonist drugs. And it talks about, uh, which is quite astonishing, it talks about that uh, most people lose between 20 and 50% of their lean body mass. That means the muscle loss uh, during these medications. And I think, as I said before, that is a result of how rapid you lose um, the weight. And I think it's important to know a couple things uh, before we get into some of the statistics is when I put these articles up, and I always put the link at the bottom, so if you want to read more, you can. Um, but it's important to also learn how to read these articles. Um, I understand that a lot of it is going to be over uh, the majority of people's heads. Sometimes a lot of it's over my head. Um, but what you want to do is you want to read the beginning. So read the obviously the title, um, and then you're going to read um, the first part of it, which is called the abstract. You see that um, right here. And then once you read the abstract, the abstract is going to tell you what the study is about. And then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, the last section is what is called the conclusion. So that's gonna be how they summarize uh, their findings. So a lot of times if you just read the abstract and then the conclusion, it's gonna tell you the majority of the article. Um, I do that when I get a new journal in at the beginning of the month. Um, I look through it, I read the abstracts. If it's not something that interests me, then I move to the next article. If it's something that interests me, then I'll read the abstract and then I'll read the conclusion. And if I'm still excited about it, I'll probably read the whole article. Um, and if I'm really excited, a lot of times I'll read it and highlight it and, and save it on my computer. Um, but that's, you know, depending on if it's something that I'm really fascinated with. So that gives you an idea how to read these. And I always put the link at the bottom. So if you want to do more reading, you can. Um, with this one, I also think it's important to know what the definitions are. So they talk about fat mass. So that's the amount of fat that's in your body. That's what that percentage is, what percentage of your body is fat. Um, if you take the fat and you subtract that from your total body mass, that's the fat-free mass. So that's the mass without fat. And then if you take the fat-free mass and you subtract the weight of your bones, that's what's called the lean body mass. That is almost all muscle. And that's what they're talking about in this article is that there's about a 20 to 50% loss of the lean body mass um, with um, the total weight loss on these GLP-1 drugs. And I think that's, that's an issue. And I think it's something that we're not going to see on the new activator because in the activator, we're not seeing those really big weight losses that we are seeing um, on the drugs. We're not seeing people that are losing 
you know, 20 pounds a month or five pounds a week or things like that. Most people are in that sensible two to three pounds um, a week of weight loss. And that's where we want to keep it. And that's going to prevent us from losing uh, muscle mass. It's going to prevent us from having a big rebound uh, once we go off um, the GLP-1 uh, activator. So uh, that's important. And then I think there's some things we can do to protect ourselves from losing body mass, lean body mass. One thing is exercise. I, I think it's important that uh, people that are taking this, um, they should be exercising uh, at least three or four times a week, if not every day. It doesn't have to be a lot. Um, remember, you can walk a mile in about 20 minutes. So if you go make a couple laps around the neighborhood, that should be good exercise. Um, if you're concerned about losing um, the body mass and losing the, losing the muscle mass um, on your backside, preventing that ozempic butt, doing some squats, 50 to 100 squats every day would definitely help that. The other thing is to make sure that we increase the amount of protein in our diet. Um, we should be taking in um, about one gram of protein for every kilogram of body weight. So if you take your body weight, just as a quick way to figure it out, if you take your body weight and divide it by half, um, so if you're you know, 200 pounds, divide that in half, that's about 100 kilograms, give or take. Um, so you should be taking about 100 grams of protein uh, in your diet uh, every day. So increasing your protein, increasing your ex exercise, you're gonna decrease the risk of losing uh, lean body mass. Um, and like I said, it happens mostly with um, the quick weight loss. It really has nothing to do uh, with the drug. Uh, but remember, the good always outweighs the bad in this. So, you know, by losing weight, we're going to decrease our blood pressure. We're going to increase our ability to metabolize glucose. So if we are borderline diabetic, that hemoglobin A1C is going to go down closer to normal. We're going to lower our cholesterol. We're going to increase our heart function. We're going to increase our kidney function. So there's so many good things that come out of this. So let's protect our muscles. Let's increase our protein, increase our exercise, uh, stay on the um, activator. And the other thing you can do is we have another great product, um, the NAD Synergizer. Uh, NAD will increase the amount of nitric oxide in our body. Nitric oxide is a strong stimulant of stem cell production. So it'll pull stem cells out of our muscle. It'll pull stem cells out of our bone marrow, and then we'll bring it to the area that we're losing muscle mass and we'll help rebuild that. So if somebody's concerned or somebody has been on one of the drugs and they've noticed uh, some muscle mass loss, get them on the NAD product as well. Um, I hope you found this all exciting. Um, I love doing these videos. Uh, if you have a video that you would like me to make, uh, if there's a bunch of people interested, uh, I'm going to try to do one every day if I can, at least every other day. So put out at least three or four a week. Uh, go ahead and make comments about what you'd like to hear me talk about. Um, I hope you have a great week. Uh, I'm looking forward to the launch just like you are. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day. Bye-bye.